What's up, everyone? You are now locked into Spec Talk, my podcast geared toward high performers obsessed with personal excellence and doing 1% more to win every single day. Now, I'm committed to bring you the real, real talk, badass real talk <laughs> about what is going to take you to optimal health and performance for entrepreneurs, executives, athletes, or anyone that identifies as such. <laughs> you could have an inner athlete inside of you, and I'm going to highlight it from all pillars of my high performance system. Okay, let's get into it. I have, I have a topic today that I think you're really going to like. What nutritionally is keeping you fat and unhealthy? I smile because it's a touchy subject. So I want you to close your eyes and imagine I'm coming into your house to raid it and expose all of the trash that you will never admit to me (laughs) in the comments section. And you know what? I, I encourage you to admit it in the comments section because this is social media. We're going to get social. And, uh, this, Hey, you know what they say, admitting it's the first step. So let's, let's get to this. I got so much I could say about this. I'm so excited. Okay. So nutrition, uh, on Twitter the other day, I got a message from someone, Hey, you know, I do X amount of things five days a week. However, I have 30% body fat. How can I get that down to 20? I know I need to eat more protein. What else can I do? How do I do that? I'm thinking, shit, that's a loaded question. Because I don't really know the quality of what you're doing, oh stranger on Twitter. But I'm thanking you for reaching out because it takes a lot of courage to do that, even if it was a personal referral. So I look at these questions that I get on social media, and I got a question like this at a networking event the other night. Oh, like, well, you know, I haven't been in the gym in years, so, like, what's the best way to gain muscle and lift and eat and I'm thinking oh that's another loaded question because I think so deeply about this so uh, what I'm going to do today is break this down to concepts that are super important for you to understand first because one of my mentors and best friends said to me the best thing you can be is smart and self-aware okay not everybody is smart in fitness that's where I come in but if you're self-aware at least we got something to work with. I could teach you the rest, okay? So what are the habits that you have right now that are not conducive to making you healthy? And furthermore, specific to nutrition, what is in your home? There is a, it's like Murphy's Law, but a different kind of law. It's like if it's in your house, you or somebody else in the house will eat it. <laughs> Who's bringing what in that doesn't belong there? And how are you disposing of it? So let's go back to the beginning. Habits, right? We want to understand what it is that you are doing that is keeping you unfit and unhealthy from a nutritional perspective. Now, when you look at nutrition, there are a couple buckets that we can divide this into. There's eating out, right? You don't know what's in the food that you're eating. It tastes darn good but you don't know what's in it. Excess salt, fat, sugar, whatever. They want you coming back. It's going to taste good. You know what I'm saying? So is that one of your habits? Eating out too much? How many, how many days a week do you eat out? Are you eating out every night? Are you going to functions? Are you catering dinners? Like, what are you doing? Who are you? Are you constantly getting lunches at work for the team? Like I met somebody who had an office that would only cater specific healthy food by actual chefs. I'm like, well, you're going above and beyond. Uh, Bravo to you. But not everybody has that luxury. But when you walk into the kitchen at work, is it bagels and donuts? It sucks because bagels and donuts are great. But you can't do that every single day, all day, because that's what's accessible to you. You have to come prepared, right? So what? that's the one habit. Maybe you're going out too much. What is the habit on your social life? Okay, here's another thing. How much are you drinking? I'm not the anti-alcohol club, but I am not the pro-wasted every week club. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I'm very much that person that came from, you know, as I explained in another podcast, that teaching, you know, 12 fitness classes a week or whatever the heck it was. But when you go and you have your deep dish pizza (laughs) and your blue martinis and Cosmos and your deep dish cookie sundaes, every Friday, Saturday night. That's it. It's gone. It's done. Sorry, you can't out-train a poor diet. 
I don't care how much I was working out for myself, running triathlons and teaching 12 classes a week of spinning and kickboxing. It's just not going to happen. So with that being said, alcohol is one of those things that goes unnoticed by people, right? They, they're not chewing it. They're not really putting like mentally caloric content to it. So one glass of wine at dinner, and I know for me, I'm going to sound like an addict when I say this, but if I, if I drink, that's it. It's eight more going down, and God only knows where I'm going to be, so I just don't do it at all. But that's, a, that's another eighteen to 1,200-calorie day in addition to the food you ate. So that's another thing. That's a habit, okay? What other habits are keeping you unfit and unhealthy? Along with those, which is I touched on mostly under the social bucket, right, eating out and drinking, that affects your sleep. And without getting too detailed about how sleep affects your cortisol and your fat levels and all of that crap, <laughs> not crap, but you know what I mean, it's too deep for right now. But if you are continually losing sleep for whatever reason, stress, being out too late, eating too late and therefore you can't fall asleep or stay asleep or being uncomfortable, waking up to pee, whatever it is, Uninter uh, interrupted sleep is going to affect your ability to lose weight. Your body's under stress. Okay. There's a lot of these things that are habits that affect nutrition. Do you have a ritual? I remember dating someone in the early 2000s and mistakenly moved in together. Don't do that until you're ready. But we had a horrible habit. We would eat dinner and we always had to have something sweet after dinner. And what was near us was Cold Stone Creamery. No offense to Cold Stone, but there are some places that you probably shouldn't go every day. And this had like the highest of, of allowable fat legally by law. And that's why it tastes so good. So I'm not saying stay away from it. You know, you want to take your kids every once in a while and get a cold stone, fine. But every day, this was our habit. That, that, that was a bad habit. And so that leads you to the next question about habits. Who are you surrounding yourself with that is aiding and abetting your addiction? My addiction was sugar, right? Having, having dessert after every dinner. But that didn't just stop at dinner. Then it became when I'm from the East Coast, so we got Wawa. I stopped at Wawa for lunch, and oh, wait, look, we got the cookies and the brownies. I got to get this, and then I got to get my cappuccino with the sugary, you know. Mm -mm. It became that all day. It became a habit that just infiltrated my day instead of just keeping it at dinner. And instead of keeping it once a week as a Saturday special, it became every night. Oh, we got to go get ice cream. My parents did the same thing. That was with Dairy Queen, you know? So got to look at those habits. If you write these down, like really get critical, what is your schedule like? What are, what, are, what are those habits? You have to be able to identify the things that are not moving you forward toward your goal because in that case, you'll find that goals are here, habits are here. Are, are these converging to get you to where you want to be? A lot of times those actions are not. So you're going to write all that down. Now let's take this another one. We're going to do one more angle specific to this because a million angles we can go. But this next question for you is the number one thing that if you said, Christina, I'm paying you to come into my house, whip us all into shape. The training, the recovery, the meals, the everything. Do, do your thing. Work your magic. All right, I'm going to come in. I'm the fairy godmother. I'm going to have my magic wand. I'm going to walk in, and I'm going to check your cabinets because you don't realize the things that are brought in or that you bring in and what their impact is. So if 90% of your food is prepackaged in the pantry, shelf-stable, and has a little girl on it with pigtails, <laughs> little Debbie, you're probably eating that when you're hungry because it's readily available, it's not spoiling, and it's tasty. So the first thing you're going to do right now, and if you're me with my fairy godmother magic wand walking in to transform your place, you're going to look in your cabinets. How many ingredients are in the lists of things that you have that are shelf-stable in the pantry? Most cereals are full of sugar. So... When you look at the ingredients on the ingredient label, you're going to see this. The first, I don't know if you know this, the first ingredient in, on the label underneath the nutrition facts is the most prominent. 
So if it says flour, sugar, whatever, that's in the greatest quantity. They don't tell you the breakdown of the quantity, but then as you get to the last ingredient, there's at least of that. Most of your prepackaged products that are processed and shelf stable are not going to be healthy. Okay. Quick story. My dad had a little hospital episode and he was determined to get healthy. He says, I'm going to get a nutritionist. I was like, you know what, dad, you should do that. Just, you should pay somebody because she'd be great. <laughs> Meanwhile, two months prior, I had written a, a menu for him and a shopping list. And my biggest concern with my parents or anyone really, because I'm very protein centric, as you've probably heard in some of my reels, is, Dad, I got to get you to eat protein, like chicken, fish, like whatever. I'm not eating a salad. I'm like, what do you mean salad? It's not about this. It's not a salad. Eat the salad with the protein, but I want you to have the protein. Oh, no, I got these. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Dad. I got these. Um, what do you call those things? Those po loaded potato skins are frozen. You know, they're from Fridays or frozen. I'm going to finish those first. I'm like, that's not protein. <laughs> so. It's not just the pantry, it's the freezer too. So I go over, and you know, there's the croissants and the pound cake on the table, which by the way, for being diabetics, they really don't eat a lot of that. They could keep that on the table for a week, which is me, I'm the one that has the problem. I'm the one that doesn't eat that stuff, so when I'm in front of it, I'm like, ooh, it's Christmas, it's Thanksgiving, you know? <laughs> eat all the pound cake. But it's still not conducive to what the goal was. So I look at the pantry, I look in the freezer, and I'm like, oh my God, here's the frozen ice cream cones and the popsicles and the this and the that. Here we go, and you're diabetic. I digress. But don't limit it to just the pantry, your freezer and your refrigerator. Next thing is what is in your home because of what? Entertainment purposes? Love? Do people bring you brownies and cookies because they think that's love? And do you take it? A lot of this exercise you're going to find is if you say you have a specific goal and you're not doing the things that you need to do to reach that goal, you're going to start saying no. And there's power in no. The greatest power I ever felt saying no was leaving a job that didn't fulfill me. And that's a huge decision. Putting my house up for sale, that's a huge decision. Saying no to something that 300,000 other people want, it's pretty powerful. No one in their right mind, unless they're just not a sweets person, is going to turn down cookies and brownies when someone just brings them over because they, that's their way of showing love, right? But you saying no is going to feel so powerful. So let's do this. To the best of your ability, get in the kitchen, look at the pantry, look at the freezer, look at the refrigerator, what's sitting on the counter, where did it come from? Start saying no to the things that don't align with your meal plan. Start saying no to the things that are not going to get you, the beach body, the clear mind, all of that stuff, okay? The next part is to look at a dietary recall because chances are if you're a busy professional, you are not eating home with home-cooked meals, three to four meals, five meals a day. Chances are you're getting catered at the office, you're calling Uber Eats, you're having your assistant pick it up, like whatever the case is, or you're running to the vending machine, right? Do a three-day dietary recall. I make all of my clients do this. I want to know what you're eating. I want to know the quantity. I want to know where you got it. And don't fake it. Give me the real deal, the real habits. What is a realistic day for you, worst and best? What is most consistent of the worst and the best? Are you 80% worst or 80% best? Because that changes the context of what you're already doing. The more specific, time of day, portion size, what the, is the food, where did you get it, what were you feeling when you ate it? I mean, all of this, you really want to go down the rabbit hole, we can go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> and then the kitchen scan, the house scan, the habit scan, all of that stuff. So you got what are you doing when you're not home, and you got everything that you're doing when you are home, and where did it come from? I guarantee you from a nutritional perspective, when you write it down, and I can help you quantify it if you'd like to do a consultation, when you write it down and you see, holy crap, <laughs> three quarters of my daily calories went to Oreos, you realize, well, this is why I'm going over. And this is the first step. The realization is the first step to making nutritional changes because no one in their right mind, unless they're me, which is a bodybuilder, this is part of my hobby slash profession, it feels like a full-time job, is 
gonna just jump on a meal plan and eat it perfectly, 200%. But those of you struggling with, well, how do I make this work with work, my secretary, the boardroom, the office, the donuts, the breakfast, when we go there and we get bagels, these are the things that you need to, to see. Because I guarantee you a meal plan is something that you can execute when you know your life habits and your tendencies. But knowing where you are right now with your nutrition habits and what is in your home and how it got there and what you do when you're not at home, that's going to be that's going to be key for you, okay? So, you will identify what is keeping you unfit and unhealthy and we're going to probably have a conversation. So, I invite you to reach out to me if you have any questions on this social media, uh my Instagram is where you could find some tips. Uh, email is christina at christinaspeckos.com. And if there's anything specific that you want me to cover in a future podcast, reach out. I'm all ears. I love to hear what you guys want. And I hope you enjoy this episode. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope this brought you some value today. Now go do your homework. Oh my God.